Grab your Bible. Let's go to the Word of God. Um, Genesis chapter 32. I want to pick up where we left off last week. I was doing four-point message. I only gave you one last week to lay some foundation. So we're going to pick up from there and continue on this morning. Uh, Genesis chapter 32. Um, let's see what God is saying and what God is doing in our midst. Amen. So I'm going to read this in its entirety. Go down to verse 22. And um, three simple things I want to share with you from this story. But um, let's, let's, let me read verse 22 through 32. Then we'll pray and we will review what we did last week and move to it. So if you're there, say amen. amen. Come on, say amen if you're there. Amen. It begins by saying this is where Jacob was wrestling with that. I'm going to just use the word man for now so we can talk to it. It says that same night. He being Jacob rose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket and Jacob's hip, hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been delivered. And the sun rose upon him and he passed, as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh, that is on the hip socket because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. Let us pray and allow God to move. God, you're wonderful, you're gracious, you're mighty, you're awesome. As we engage scripture this morning, Lord, and we look at this text afresh and anew, open our hearts to hear, to understand, to receive, and most of all, to make the adjustments so we can be who you would have us to be. We love you, God. We praise you. We worship your name because you're just wonderful, God. So as we teach, I pray that something would be said that would encourage somebody to want to make a difference, to be transformed, and to enter a relationship with you. So we give our time to you, God. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. After the brokenness comes the blessing. And then tell them this. Say, if you've been hurt in life, get ready for the blessing. Yeah, come on, tell the other person. Say, if you've been hurt in life, get ready for the blessing. Amen. We serve, we serve an awesome God. We serve a great God. We serve a wonderful and a phenomenal God. I'm going to ask our tech team to kind of work with me a little bit. As we can go to the next side. I want to kind of review, review the message a little bit so we can kind of talk through uh, what God is. Here's what we shared, shared with you last night, that brokenness begins with a personal encounter with God. Meaning that we're talking about the whole issue of that before we can see God face to face or we can see God face, there's a place where God needs to take out of us those character traits that are not like him. And we had a couple of quotes that kind of, one of them that stuck out to me says this, that God cannot use you greatly until he first hurts you deeply. And, and a lot of us want the greatness of God to work in us. We want God to use us greatly. But a lot of us are not willing to go through the part where he has to strip us down and he has to break us. Come on, y'all. That's the difficult part. That's where we get upset. That's where we, we abandon God's processes. But I want to encourage you and remind you once again, there's a blessing on the other side. Go to the next slide. Let's walk through this to kind of see what's going. So here's a, uh, three things that I shared with you that kind of talks to that so you can get a feel. Number one, we talked about when it comes to this encounter with God, 
We must get to the place where we eliminate everything that could potentially distract us from encountering God. And, and you notice from the text when we read that last week that it was after Jacob's wife and family and children and possession had gone across the Jabuk and he found himself alone with God that God was enabled, God was positioned to engage him. And what we were trying to extract from that is that sometimes the distractions of the world will prevent us from seeing God. So God has to pull things away from us to get us all by ourselves so he can begin his work in us. And then the other thing that we saw that I really appreciate about the text is he has a way of preventing us from completely crossing over until we encounter him at the crossroads of, the, of our life. For those of you that may have missed the message, I want to encourage you to go listen it because here's what happened. If you read that text, Jacob had crossed the Jabuk several times. He had took his family across and he came back. And he took his kids across and then he came back. And what I shared with you last week, if I am Jacob and Esau is chasing me to kill me, and everything within me says that Esau is after me, and I am afraid of Esau, if I get a head start, there's no way you're going to get me to stop running and back up. Come on, are you with me? But this guy, it's almost as if God said to him, not yet, and pulled him back and said, I've got some work to do in you. And this is where I want you to hear me say that he will prevent us from completely crossing over until at those crossroads when he, he can do his work in us. And then the final thing that we talked about is that God will engage us in those lonely moments to cause us to engage those challenges that impedes the realization of his purposes for our life. Here's what that says. When God has engaged you in a wrestling match. He's not fighting you just to fight you. Come on, I need a couple of amens. He's not engaging you just for the mere pleasure of just hugging you. <laughs> he wants to strip us. He wants to take some things out of us. And here's what I said parenthetically about the sex that I hope you didn't miss last week. From Jacob's vantage point, we, we, the, the, the problem with you and the problem with me is we have the book, and we know how the story ends, but if you're in Jacob's shoe, and Jacob is running for his life, he just left Laban, and he's on his way back to his mother's house, land, his daddy's land, and his brother, who vowed to kill him because of what happened in their childhood, it, you know, you're running, and then you're hiding, you find yourself all alone, I wanted you not to miss the point last week that when Jacob engaged this person in battle, he had no idea who it was. Very, very important for you to understand that my problem and your problem is that we, we, we know the story. So we know the book ends by saying it was God engaging him. But understand with me, at that particular point in time, Jacob had no idea who it was that he was fighting. And what I extracted from that is that sometimes God will use situations and circumstances to engage us. And if we're not aware of the fact that he's trying to do a work in us, we could miss the very vehicle or instrument that God is using to clean us up. Are you tracking with me? Good. Amen. So I want to I wanna go move on today. Go to the next slide. Let's kind of walk through this. So. The second thing I want you to pick up, and I want to pick this up today, I'm going to move swiftly so you can get this, is that I want you to hear me say that here's when brokenness occurs. It occurs while we are wrestling with God, okay? Now, I am being intentional in using God here and not man, and I'll go back and forth between the two because don't, don't, don't make yourself sometimes cause yourself to think this. Listen, I'm just going to go in a prayer meeting by myself. I'm going to go in my prayer closet by myself, and while it's just me and God hanging out at the worship experience or in, at home or wherever we find ourselves in our war room, that God's going to break me. No, 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 no. I want you to hear me say this. God will use life experiences. I want y'all to hear me say that. God will use life experiences, right? And, and, and lock into this. And if we don't 
realize that God is using life experiences to shape, to mold, to break us, to eliminate from us those things that are not like him, we will fight hard and wrong and fool ourselves into thinking we won and we'll find ourselves repeating the cycle again. So, free. If you find yourself in some cycle that you can't seem to get out of, pay attention to what happens to you while you're in that cycle. Y'all with me? Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention to what happens to you while you're in that cycle. Say amen if y'all got that. Now, y'all, y'all got to help me out because I need to work this. And if I, if I don't get to point three and four, guess what happened? We just started a three-part series, okay? So, 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 so say, God will work on me while I am living life. One more time. Say, God will work on me while I am living life. Watch the text. Let's look at the text. So watch the text. Verse 24 says, now the wrestle match is going on, and if you miss it, make sure you picked up last week's message, you can be caught up. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip, hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint, and don't miss, yeah, when it happened, as he wrestled with him. One more time. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with the man. I've got to give you a little bit of literary context for those who missed last week. The whole premise of God needing to break Jacob is that God was not going to use Jacob in his old self to realize God's purposes. Are you with me? Um, So God needed to do a work in him, hence this encounter that we find ourselves in. Now here's what you need to know about Jacob. And when I use this word, uh, it's nothing offensive, okay? So be spiritual. Jacob was not a punk. Some of y'all are like, ooh. Matter of fact, you remember, you remember, you remember when he saw Rachel... And she was watering her daddy's flock. And the text says there was a big stone covering the mouth of the well. The text doesn't say that Jacob said, hey, fellas, come help me move this. He was so impressed by that girl, he went over and picked that thing up himself and moved it out the way so her daddy's flock. Come on, y'all. Y'all know the text. Y'all know the text. Matter of fact, for for how many years? Was it 21 years? A lot of years he spent time at Laban's um, home taking care of that flock, taking care of all that good stuff that was going on. And and now all of a sudden he's on his way back home. He's on the run from his brother because the text said, pretext that they saw Esau coming with 400 men approaching Jacob. So he was prepared to engage whoever it was. And while in his sleep, he found himself now in a wrestling match. Everything within him said to him that he was engaging either Esau or one of Esau's men because he had no idea who he was fighting. So guess what Jacob was saying to himself? You ain't gonna win this one. Come on, y'all. I'm not gonna lose this battle. I'm gonna fight for everything in me. Now, watch the text carefully, and let's, let's, let's work through this so we can see what it's saying. Say amen if you're at the text. Watch the text carefully. Notice what it says. It says here, when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, what did he do? He touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out or dislocated as he wrestled with him. Now, let me, give you, let me orient you. Don't for one second make the mistake of reading this text and thinking that, man, Jacob had it flat going on. The man was losing. That's what you thought. They were in a wrestling match, and Jacob is wrestling. And the angel or the man or whoever we want to say it is, is wrestling. 
And Jacob is not giving up. Jacob is not letting go. And then the text seems on the surface to read this, that the man realized that he couldn't beat Jacob, so he cheated. Oh, don't act like y'all don't do the same thing. You get in a street fight, and you know you ain't got nothing in your car. And you see, you can't fight. I'm going to my car. I'm going. You're trying to get help. Or you pick up a rock. Come on. Or you pick up a stone. Or you pick up something. Because all by yourself, you realize that you don't have the capacity to defeat. Do not put that on the text. Because for those of us who know the story, we knew who it was that he was what? So view the story now from the lens of the end, not at the moment. So here's what the text says. When the man saw, translating that Hebrew word, when he observed, when he understood that, oh, you just that hard-headed. Oh, you just that stubborn. Oh, you just that arrogant. Oh, you just that much of a manipulator. Okay, I got, I got something for you. I'm going to give you a life experience that will revolutionize your life. So here's what the text says. Here's what the text says. The problem with your translation again is it uses this euphemistic term that says that he just touched him. Don't, don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. When you do the word etymologically on the text, here's what it says. It struck him. He hit him so hard that his, his hip got dislocated. And, and the reason I want to point that out, I want to point that out, is because sometimes it's so difficult for God to get to us. It's so difficult for God to get to you. It's so difficult for God to penetrate our hard headed our attitudes, our mindset, that he's got to dislocate. I wish I had somebody in here. He's got to dislocate you just to get your attention. It's not like he can't win. He's already ahead, but he throws life at you. He throws life at you. And here's what I said last week. And because we don't know who we're wrestling, we get mad at life. I wish she don't know who she's messing with. And God caused your marriage to go upside down and you still mad at the spouse. And the whole time God was trying to get at you to get something out of you that wasn't like him. So he had to dislocate your hip. I wish I had somebody in here. Come on. We didn't learn the lesson about what it means to live a life that's pleasing to God. And he realized in the wrestling match, oh, you that stubborn. So he had to dislocate your hip. And we, we are so angry with life. Because we don't put things into perspective. We're not talking a normal guy. We're talking a manipulator. We're talking a trickster. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, if you don't believe what I'm saying to you, if you want to check the biblical text, brokenness for Abraham looked like this. Take your son Isaac, your only son. Come on. He had to, come on, hit him at the hip to get something to happen. Here's what it looks like for Joseph. He ended up in a pit. Come on. Here's what it looked like for Samson. It cost him his eyes. Here's what it looked like for David. It caused him the throne. Here's what it looked like for me. I thought I was all of that. But God had to take me through some things in life to strip me of who I am to become who he wants me to be. And it didn't happen in the prayer closet. Because while I was living life, I knew what I was doing wasn't right, but I thought it was all about me. And God said, oh, you're all that, huh? All right, let's see. Bam. Pop the hip socket a little bit. 
And it's in the breaking of the hip socket that he gets our attention. I wish I had somebody in here. Don't act like your hip hadn't been broken. Come on, talk to me. You've gone through some things. You've gone through some things. On the other side of the fight, I said, God, you should have done that a long time ago. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know I'm not by myself because who I am today, I could have been here a long time ago. And, and, and so guess what happens now? Whenever I find myself wrestling with a man, here's what I do, give up. And as I learn to surrender, here's what God says sooner than ever. Oh, you're learning. Oh, okay, cool. Next assignment. Yeah, y'all not getting this. And then in that assignment, another man shows up, and he engages me in battle. Hey, how are you learning? Next assignment. Are you with me? And some of us are stuck here waiting for the next assignment. Come on. And you can't get to the next assignment because there's things in you that he has engaged you with, and you're still fighting like it's about you. And the whole time he's trying to clean us up. Come on, turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's trying to clean you up. <laughs> yeah, come on, turn to yourself now. Say, self, God's trying to clean me up. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. So brokenness, brokenness, it happens during the mess wrestling mind. And, and don't miss this, don't, don't miss this. Even after the hip was broken, the wrestling didn't stop. He still persevered. Oh, I wish I had somebody. You see, you and I, we abort too quick. We give up too quick. Because here's what I said, we don't like the pain of the valley, but we want the mountain. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you, this church is not called Restoration Christian Fellowship accidentally. Yeah. I remember in the early years of my marriage, my wife would say to me, boy, you are arrogant somebody. And she wouldn't say somebody. She'd say, yeah, you kind of get, yeah, y'all stay clean, stay clean. We in church. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And, and I'm like, who are you calling arrogant? You know, <laughs> you arrogant. And then God said, you better listen to that woman. I'm trying to use her to wrestle you. Oh, y'all not, y'all, y'all. <laughs> and, 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 and I wish he had done it himself, but he used her hand to hit me. <laughs> Broke the hip a little bit. Fellas, you better listen. <laughs> Let's move on. Go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Let me show you this real quick. Watch this now. Watch this real quick. So the result of brokenness is what? Everybody said it's what? Come on, say it together. It's what? One more time. Say it one more time. A what? Watch it, the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. It says here, verse 25, then he, being the man, said, let me go, for day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you do what? Man said, you want a blessing? Let me say this. Then what he, and he said to Jacob, said to him, what is your name? And he, being Jacob, said what? Jacob. Come on, say Jacob. Jacob. You guys have seen that with me? 25. Then he said, let me, 26, let me go, for the day has broken. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you do what? Bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he, being Jacob, said, Jacob. Let me read because I want to talk about this. And then he said, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with man and have what? Prevailed. Okay, I'm going to skip verse 29 for now. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's your name? Come on, ask me and say, what's your name? Okay, go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Let me walk you through this. Go to the next slide. I want you all to see this. If you guys can get to the next slide, I want to walk through that real quick. Okay. Observations. By pronouncing his name, Jacob was admitting to character defect. Stop there. If you go back to the life of Jacob when he was born, when his mama said there's two nations in the womb, and he came out grabbing his brother's heel, his name was called Jacob because of what he was doing. Right? When you look at his lifestyle, 
with the lentil beans and the birthright and all that stuff, what he did in stealing Esau's blessing, he was living out his name. So here's what that means in the Old Testament. Your name can be etymologized back to mean, name could mean character. Name means character. So Eve was called red earth because she was taken out of the earth. Adam was called man. When you do, do the Hebrew word, because that's what Adam, that's what that word means. Made, and Moses was called Moses because Moses' name drawn out. Come on, y'all know this. Y'all, come on. Right? They took him out of the water. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, God charged changed Abram to Abraham. So here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. Hey, hey, Jacob, this is the man now after he hit him, okay? And he's, whoa, he's, okay, you got my attention. Then Jacob says, okay, can we end this? He says, no, I can't end it right now. I need you to admit some things. What's your name? The problem with the English text is we read Jacob and we think it stops there. But understand, if you're speaking Hebrew, what's your character? And, and, and I'm happy that the text says Jacob responded. Because my problem is I don't want to own my stuff. Oh, y'all not hearing me. I don't want to admit it. So, Jacob, you want a blessing? Before I can bless you, you've got to own up to the frailties of who you are. Because if you don't own it, I can't change it. And I refuse to bless you in the old mess that you are. What's your name? Okay, trickster. Liar. Manipulator. And J he said, Jacob. And he said, Jacob. And he spoke to what his character was. I wish I had somebody in here. Because... You know you've been lying. Come on. You know you've been manipulating. You know you've been stealing. You know you've been shucking and jiving. And God has you in the wrestling match. You're caught dead in the stuff. Come on. Say adultery. Say fornicator. Say thief. Come on. Say liar. Admit to who we are if we want to see the face of God. Brokenness means you've got to own your mess. Oh, I need two witnesses. Come on. Come on. I need two witnesses in here. I know you don't like this because you don't like to tell folk what you used to do or who you are. What's your name, Jacob? Notice this. The question follows the request for the blessing. I need to get out of this. Okay, what's your problem? I've got financial management issues. Own it. Y'all got real quiet. You guys all right? Y'all all right? Y'all all right, right? Because it gets better, it gets better, it gets better. Because once he said it, then notice the C, there was a removal of guilt associated with his past. Because once I can say what the problem is and allow God to change me, then God does with the guilt. Come on, y'all know this. That's what Calvary is, right? His blood washes it white. Come on. Now, when I go to heaven, God's not going to pull up a list of what Felix used to do. Come on. When I stand before him, that white screen will just turn red because his blood is going to cover my past. Come on. Because of the removal of guilt associated with it. And I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to have to pick this up again. But we'll pick it up Wednesday. This will make y'all come out Wednesday. Right? And so notice what he says. And he renamed him, what? Israel. Your name will no longer be called trickster, manipulator, all that stuff. I'm going to rename you to Yisrael, which means God is going to fight for you. Why was he a manipulator? Why was he a trickster? Because he was always trying to fight for himself and fix things for himself. I wish I had somebody in here. Why was he in the predicament that he was in? Because he was sending all the gifts ahead to soften Esau's heart so when he engaged Esau, he would have the upper hand and he'd be able to fight him differently. After this, notice what the text says. Hey, you don't have to fight no more. God's got this. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> grandma them, grandma them didn't go to seminary, Pastor Karen. But they had some good theology. 
Because here's what grandma them used to say. They say that same thing this way. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight, come on, y'all, my battle, what's going to happen? Y'all know the story. Victory, what? Will be mine. And, and so that's very, very important that you not miss that because God wants to change your name. God wants to bless us. God wants to be on the upper hand. But we have to allow him to do a work in us to change our character, to remove those defects in us that are unlike him and let him be in front and we stand behind him. And my goodness, you'd be amazed at what he's going to do, right? He says, what's your name? I'm done. Jacob. And he said, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with man, and you have done what? Prevail. Then Jacob said to him, please tell me your name. But he said, what is your, don't, don't try to ask God what's his character. Okay. I, I'm going to let that go. And there he blessed him. Look at the last thing. Put the last slide on the screen. Put the last slide up there. I want you all to see this. Now watch this. So when broken, our walk has changed. Why? Because we've seen God face to face. Here's what that says in summation. There's no way you can walk up on God like this. Brother walk. And then seeing God and walk back like that. No, it don't work like that. You walk up on God, and when he gets done, that this you. Everything changes, right? And here's what people are going to say. Hey, man, what happened? You used to walk like this. Why are you walking like this now? What happened? And here's what you said. I seen God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here's what that means. Let, let me read the text. Let's read the text and we'll be done. It says here, so Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet his life has been delivered. And the sun rose upon him as he passed. Peniel, and notice what he was doing? Limping because of the what? Let me stop there. Y'all got to see this. This is, this is, I wish we had time to go into chapter 33 because here's what chapter 33 says. That when, when, when he encountered Esau, Esau saw him and Esau ran up and hugged him. They didn't even fight no more, right? Let me paint a picture for you. Understand with me. The next day, Jacob goes, right? And he's going to where his family is. And here's how he walking. And you got to see Miss Jacob. You got to see Rachel and Leah. Hey, baby, what happened? When we left you, you had two good legs. What happened? Well, I mean, <laughs> what had happened was, you know, <laughs> I met God. Ah, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. And, and, and he changed everything about me. Well, aren't you afraid of Esau no more? Well, this reminds me that God's going to fight for me. So let's go face him. I wish I had somebody in here. Yeah, yeah. You see, if you've ever been hungry and he provided food for you, the limb reminds you that God will fight for you. If you've ever been lonely and he comforts you, the limb reminds you that God's going to fight for you. If you've ever been desperate and he was there for you, the limb reminds you that God will fight for you. Be proud of your limb. Be proud of your limb. That God will fight. But this is what we do. We don't want nobody to know we have a limp. So we come to church with crutches. Faking the funk. Like hey, ain't nothing wrong. Come on, y'all. Acting like you've been holy your whole life. Acting like you hadn't gone through nothing. And the crutches is faking the funk. Got you walking away because you don't want nobody to see what God has done. And the world is dying and going to hell because of a church that refused to stand and say, look what God has done for me. He's changed my life. He's changed my walk. He's changed my talk. Everything about me is new. Ah! Boy, you better stop before you make me hoop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord have mercy. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I tell you all to relocate. I like that. Amen. We serve a great God. Come on, worship team. Come on, come on. Come on, worship team. Listen, this is serious business. 
God wants to mold us. God wants to use us. But man, he's going to engage us at those points of difficulty, those points of heartaches, and we must get to the place where we submit and surrender to him. I want you to process. If you're here and you've been to Jacob, here's what I said, I used to be Jacob. I did. And he got a hold of me. Hold of me. Grandma them used to say, something got a hold of me. Come on, y'all know it. And then she resolved it by saying it was the Holy Ghost. The conviction you're feeling is not me. It's the Spirit of God with his arms around your neck. And he's ready to touch you or strike you on the hip. Surrender before it's too late. So if God is speaking to you this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to give you a chance to come. And say, come give your heart. These men and women are here to pray with you. If God is speaking, you come, you come, you come, you come. Let him change you. Don't stay in the wrestling match. Don't keep going through the same cycle. Surrender. Come on, give it to him. 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 Come this morning. Let him be God in your life. If God is talking, come. And if, if that's you and you say, I need to give my heart to God, come. And maybe you're saying, you know, I know God. But I can't get to the next level. I don't know why. Now it makes sense. It's not about the external. It's what God is trying to do internally. It's called rededication, the sanctification process. He cleans us up so he can move us up. He cleans us up so he can move us up. He cleans us up so he can move us up. And listen, I told y'all, Every now and again, I got to go through a cleaning myself. We all need to go through that every now and then. Come on, come on, come on. And if God is speaking, you come this morning. Holy Spirit, move in this place. God, I love you more than anything, God. More than life itself, I love you. So Holy Spirit, move in this place, God. Thank you for brokenness we look like you on the back end we sound like you we worship you we work for you move in this place God as we give ourselves to you in your name we pray